Hi, I have Jeff Wolf back on the show from Xylab. Jeff, thanks for coming back on. Thank you. He's their director of eDiscovery, and I wanted to ask him some questions um, as it relates to what differentiates Xylab from other products out on the market. Uh, some of my clients may want to use this type of artificial intelligence program to help um, get through their review and, and see what the results are of using AI versus the traditional e-discovery review process. So, sure. Jeff, can you tell us what sets Zilab apart from other competitors in the marketplace? Sure, sure. So, uh, first, I think Zilab uh, is uniquely positioned in the fact that we are uh, we we understand the corporate space quite well as well as the law firm space, um, but we got our start in corporate and uh, our start in information governance. So we are very vested in search and data science, and that's really where we, we've put a lot of our focus. Uh, we have both on-premise uh, solutions as well as cloud-based SaaS solutions like every other next-gen provider. Mm -hmm. um, but we uh, really push our interface, our user interface and our user experience as one of the most unique selling points, and that is that uh, it is not difficult to start using. Uh, anyone, any legal professional can pick up our product in an hour from start to finish and understand really how to utilize it. Uh, drag and drop interfaces for getting data into the system and uh, immediate uh, color coding and tagging, uh, easy search, and the ability to, uh, to really visualize your data and understand what's in the data set. Okay. Uh, so what would you say would, for a company that has to deal with multiple jurisdictions, they're in Europe, they're in the U.S. Sure. There's some unique challenges posed by all the, the various regulations out there, like GDPR. Right. Maybe they have operation in China. How, how could you help a company that has to deal with various regulatory authorities spanning the globe? Sure, and that's another advantage that Xilab has, actually. We're actually a global company. So we're dual headquartered in, in Washington, D.C., here in the U.S., as well as Amsterdam and the Netherlands and the EU. Um, and as a result, we have cloud operations in both jurisdictions. So our customer, global customers, can actually keep data, U.S. data in the U.S., and they can keep European Union data in the EU and not worry about that issue. Uh, but we also have expertise, consulting expertise, in, on both, uh, in both environments, both geographic locations. Uh, for example, I'm doing a lot of work now with corporations, uh, not so much focused on uh, directly just on e-discovery, because e-discovery is a bit reactive. Uh, you know, or corporations go through peaks and valleys with e-discovery, the litigation. Sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. What they ha constantly have, though, are internal investigations, mm -hmm. uh, regulatory responses in the highly regulated corporations, and more and more now, data privacy concerns. So my European colleagues deal, have been dealing with GDPR for a while. We're now starting to feel it here in the U.S. with the CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act. And there are a number of states on the horizon that are going to follow California's example. So corporations need to be able to find and classify all the data that they have in their organization that has customer information. Because if those customers request it and they can't provide it, they're financially in a lot of trouble. Do you, do you think that the, the regulations coming down on companies are going to fundamentally change how companies choose to communicate with their vendors, suppliers? In a, own employees. Absolutely. If you look at uh, if you look at all the data breach, uh, the recent data breach uh, situations, it's typically not the organization that has the problem. I won't mention any of the large companies that have recently had data breaches, but uh, it's typically not the, the the original company that that had the issue. It's one of their suppliers or one of their vendors that had access to the database and wasn't protecting mm -hmm. it properly, and that's how the trouble began. Yeah. Same thing with data privacy. Yeah, well, the supply chain certainly is a, a huge point of vulnerability for all types of organizations, the government, the military, yep. and even corporations. Yes. So what do, what do you see happening over the next few years with the adoption of AI platforms? I think the e-discovery market is going to fundamentally change. Uh, there's still always going to be a need for discovery within corporations and law firms, uh, but what you do with the data is become, going to become much more important. So it's going to be about uh, how you can extract value mm -hmm. from the data not just uh, metadata, which we've always been able to do for years now, but now more about uh, looking for entity information, people, places, organizations that are mentioned in documents and emails and collaborative environments, and being able to visualize those and quickly drill down to what was going on in your organization. 
You know, if you've got people that are going to the dentist three times a week, they're not going to the dentist. <laughs> they're doing something else. They're just <laughs> writing about going to the dentist. Yeah. Um, software like ours that can identify those, those references and documents are going to be crucial to the success of organizations. That's great. So it, it seems that there, there's continued e-discovery service provider consolidation out there. Mm -hmm. of the companies that are using tools that are more of a channel partner tool to resell. Yes. But as those companies consolidate, um, do you think that there's going to be a movement away from those providers where the companies, the firms, directly do their own e-discovery? Oh, yes. Yeah, very much so. We, we've been seeing that over the last few years. Um, a lot of companies, uh, even smaller, small companies that tend to uh, have in the past just used outside vendors for e-discovery, are now deciding that they prefer to control not just the cost, but also the, their data. They don't want their data outside of the organization for, for reasons we've already talked about. So they're purchasing in-house tools um, that they can use themselves, and then they can invite outside counsel in uh, to make use of. That way, they, they control their costs, uh, they control the efficiency, and they control the data. Okay. Well, this has been great. Thanks a bunch for being on the show. Thank you again. Take care. Bye-bye.